And hello again everyone and welcome back to The Longest Journey. If you remember last time, April had just spent some time with the Bandu, better known as the Mole People, and she managed to rescue them from the Gribbler, this evil creature that looked like an old woman that was catching Bandu and humans and eating them. And she kind of solved that problem by throwing the Gribbler into a fire, which tends to solve a lot of things. So. She has now been welcomed into the Bandu clan, and she has gotten the first piece of the um, disc that was split up among the four magical peoples, the Bandu, of course, being the first. And now she is going to continue with her quest to defeat Roper Clax, the alchemist who has stolen the wind so that she can convince Captain Nebeve to take her to the island of Elias. Yes, there is nothing simple in this game, is there? All right, let's continue with The Longest Journey. All right. We've, this is the Bandu, of course. We've just finished talking to them. Let's go wake up Crow. Hey, Crow, wake up. Wake up! Hmm? Turn off the big light, Mommy. It's called the sun, Crow. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. <sighs> I was having this weird dream about a big-ass turkey wearing a pair of red shoes. And you were there. And, and he was there. And, and, and maybe it wasn't a dream after all. I think it's safe to say that you need therapy. And we need to leave right now. We do? We do! Let's go get him! <clears throat> uh, who are we getting again? Some evil alchemist out to rule the world with his powerful and destructive magic. Yes! Exactly! Uh, I'll keep an eye out for other potential threats then, shall I? Like, uh, marauding mice? You do that, Crow. Thank you. Glad you're with us, Crow. He's still a great sidekick. Anyway, let's head on off into the jungle. Or the swamp, I guess it says. And there's nothing to do here, but just kind of run across this bridge. There's an ordeal I prefer not to go through again. Did I drop something? It feels like I dropped something. Whatever it was, one of those things probably ate it. Yeah, um, it's kind of a weird thing. What you have actually dropped is the delivery list for the um, merchant. Remember the map merchant that we're working for? Um, how we had this list and we had to get it signed every time after we made the delivery? You dropped that list. Now I'm not quite sure why they chose that way to get rid of it, but they did. They look like dark purple tulips with a satin texture. Pretty, but a little too gothic for my taste. It's like, where's the funeral? They feel very soft to the touch and soothing like skin moisturizer. I'll bring a few in case my hands get dry. Never hurts to be prepared for a dry skin emergency. And of course, the fact that it's one of the few things we can actually pick up means it's something we actually have to have, so. Yes, in this game, April suddenly remembers she's in an adventure game again. Yep, that's a floating castle, all right. Must be where Roper Clax is. Let's head on down. Now, a few things out of order here. There's a bush over here. These berries here. look ripe and juicy, but my mom taught me never to judge a book by its cover. They're probably poisonous and almost certainly fattening. But again, there's something we can pick up in this being an adventure game. We need to pick them up. Nuh-uh. That marshy ground between me and the berries looks treacherous. I'll probably get stuck and drown. April, you just went through an entire swamp. 
and now you're worried about what is that five feet of marshy ground all right fortunately we have crow I think it's funny that she has to do that little jig little dance move every time she blows that fluid It's chilly out here. You should really be wearing a sweater, doll. You don't want to catch a cold, not with the fate of the known cosmos on your shoulders. I'm fine, thanks, Crow. What's going on with you? Keeping my eyes open, you know? Floating on the warm winds, doing that whole Hawkeye shtick. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. I spotted you from at least 100 yards away. Impressive. Yep. They don't call me... The Lord of the Winds for nothing. Do they really call you that? No, but soon, by the balance, they will. Now, what can I do for you, sweetheart? Well, all we really need is to get Crow to pick up those things for us. So we're going to pick up Crow and just point him at it. Crow, I need you to fly over there and get some of those berries for me. And Crow? Yes, ma'am. Don't eat the berries. No, ma'am. And Crow complained about that surprisingly little. Thanks, Crow. You got it. I'm gonna go back up there and work on my eyesight. I ain't stopping until I can spot those cute chicks from miles and miles away. You do that, Crow. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's go talk to this strange looking thing up here. Nice stonework, but not particularly realistic. April, I'll say it again, you're the artist, not the sculptor. Strange texture. My fingers feel tingly. Oh my god! What are you? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you try to open your mouth a bit? Impossible? Okay. Okay, there's gotta be some way to help you talk. By the way, can you help me get up there? Into the castle? I don't know any magic, sorry. But I'll try to find a way to soften you up. Alright, remember we have in our inventory that purple flower that was moisturizer. And we have some berries. So let's mix the flour and the berries together and we get some moisturizing cream. Which is how you do that in reality, right? Isn't that how that works? Okay. There. You feel better? Soft. Uh, uh, softer. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't think the salve will be effective for very long. I'm April, by the way. Lorhan, I'm a sailor, and you've got to help me get out of here. I don't think I can stand it much longer. What happened to you? Oh, that blasted, blasted alchemist cast a spell on me, turned me to solid rock. Then he put me here to be gatekeeper and anchor for his blasted castle. That was near six full moons past now. You've been here for half a year? Curse the balance. We say it like that. It is an age. My wife is sure to have taken someone else's bed by now. Blasted magic. The Vanguard were right. What do you mean the Vanguard were right? That we've been at the mercy of the balance for too long. It's time to make some changes. Put the control back into the hands of the people. How would that have helped you? Well, for one, there wouldn't be any rogue magicians like this Roper Clax running about causing trouble. Do you not agree? I'm not about to argue politics with you right now, Lorhan. I'm in a hurry. Who's arguing? And blasted be my rocky hide. Get me out of here. How can I help you? 
It ain't just me, April. There are dozens of men up there. Servants and sailors and merchants and soldiers, all sent here by their masters to deal with Roper clacks. Ha! Cursed be the balance. We've all been turned to stone, and our souls trapped in a crystal that the madman keeps in his tower. He draws power from that, power that shouldn't be his by right. But this blasted problem with the balance has upset the natural order of things. If the Vanguard were in control, this would never have happened. Things would be like they used to be a long time ago. Everything was good then? Oh, sure, there were problems, but this rift, it ain't natural. Science and magic belong together, in the hands of the people. Not to some naked guardian fellow on a tower somewhere far away. Listen, we've got more important things to think about, like how I'm going to get inside the mountain, beat this clack sky, and free your soul. Yeah, 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 you're right. And I can feel my muscles turning to stone again. We must hurry. How do I get inside the mountain? I'll pull the stairs down for you. Usually when Clax comes and goes, he softens me up for a bit, just so I can raise and lower the stairs for him, and then he changes me back to solid rock again. Once you're inside, and if you manage to defeat the madman, I don't see how you're going to do that, a young woman like yourself. I'm pretty resourceful, and I'm not your run-of-the-mill teeny buffer either. You're what? Anyways, if you defeat Clax, you must find his study and break the crystal, the soul stone. That should break the spell and give us back our flesh and bone bodies. Sounds like a plan. All right, here goes. Watch your head, April. And I assume something is happening here. There we go. Now let's go inside. Okay. A labyrinth, great. I so love these things. Jump! Jump into the abyss! Who was that? Wait. Don't tell me, evil wizard. They all sound like Richard III on crack. Alright. Yes, this is the episode where April remembers she's a protagonist in an adventure game, and so has to do all those adventure game things. So, we have to get through this door. We can tell it's that door because it's the one that's got the magical glowy thing in front of it, as opposed to any of the other doors that don't have magical glowy things in front of it. Anyway, we have to solve a couple of puzzles to get there. And we're going to start with this gargoyle. He's got his hand out like he's begging. Well, what do beggars normally want? Coins, right? Well, we have some coins. So let's take those and give them to the gargoyle. Bah! I guess that means we did the right thing. Now there's two torches here. We don't need those anymore. Burning hand or flaming hand. Okay. Well, oops. We can blow those out. And you notice this eyes down here kind of flicker when we do that. That's another hint that we're doing things right or wrong. Alright, now we have the beggar back. So we give it some more coins. <laughs> and now we have, don't need that coin anymore, we have salt and pepper. Okay, it's the spice gargoyle. So we can just take those. Alright. So now that we have that, we can proceed on to the next place we need to go, which is up here. Now we need to get up here. That's easier said than done. These get controlled by this hourglass here. Take your time, April. Which you see reverses those steps. But the hourglass quickly fills up and the steps go back down. 
<laughs> yes, thank you. So what we have to do is, the second we turn this, April is going to have to start running. Okay, I'm going to immediately run down to here, and then immediately run up here. <laughs> now you may think we're trapped, but don't worry about that yet. Now we got a couple of things here. We have a piece of parchment here. We really can't do anything with that yet, so if you try to get it... It's a rolled up parchment. But we need to know it's over here because it's going to become important in a bit. Whoa! Talk about a hissy fit. Evil Mirror Universe April sure got some anger stored up. Guess she doesn't want me to get that parchment. Yeah, see, this is a mirror. It's like that Star Trek episode with the Mirror Universe Spock. It almost looks like a Mirror Universe me. They're still watching classic Trek in the 23rd century. Keep that in mind. Okay, there's another door up here. Let's go over to it. And with it, we just need to knock on the door. Who's knocking? And it's another hourglass. And same rules apply. You see it opens to here, and then when it turns around, that's going to drop again. <laughs> Ready to give up? Toss yourself in the abyss and save yourself from an eternity encased in stone. And just to bypass something here, the reason I'm trying to go through this door and not up here is, do you notice that frame? That's a painting. That's not really a set of stairs. So again, run as fast as we can to here, and then over to here. <laughs> now we can open this door and go through it. Balance be cast! Oh, shut up. Alright. Now over here we have another gargoyle. That's one stony face. What we need to do now, remember the pepper we got off that other gargoyle? And I have to wonder, does Clax himself do go through all this effort every time he wants to get into his own tower? Or is there a back door he uses? Alright, here we are. Inside the tower. Finally! <laughs> I was beginning to think you would never make it through my labyrinth. Welcome to my humble home. Do you like it? I had it built according to my own specifications by the most skilled architects of Arcadia. They have since become a permanent and quite attractive fixture of their own building, of course. Oh, but I forget my manners. I am, as I am sure you already know, Roper Clax. And you would be? April Ryan, pleased to meet you, sir. Oh. But the kitten has manners. How precious. How very precious. I am tempted to not turn you into stone. You would make a spirited wife and mother to my demonic children. But no, it will be more fun to destroy you. 
yeah. Anyway, uh, we're gonna do a few things here. Um, why did you trap the wind? Why does the wolf eat the sheep? I don't think you answered my question. Because I can, little girl. Because I can. And because of who I am. Because I am hungry. And because the time is right. I think you did it because you're insecure and you have to show off your petty magic to the world. Shut your pretty little mouth. I will devour you. I will... <clears throat> but we must not lose our self-control, must we? No, we must not. Yeah, um... Actually, it's not so much petty magic. If he's able to stop the wind over the whole world, you would think that's kind of an impressive thing. Anyway. Why did you turn those people into stone? Questions, questions, questions! I do not need to explain myself to you, little bastard child! Do you know who your parents are? No, of course not! Too stupid! What? What do you know about my parents? Suffer the little children. Oh, how I love that phrase. It is my life's philosophy. I like suffering, especially the suffering of innocent children. Their screams are so pretty, their tears so salty. You're a real shit, Clax. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Wait, he's Pee Wee Herman? Um, no, the thing you have to realize here is that we're getting another hint about something odd about April's parents. Uh, we've heard a couple of things about that by now, so just to keep it in mind. But let's get rid of this guy, shall we? Prepare to be defeated. Prepare to be defeated. Ha! Clichés! Is that the best you can do? Watch me. Yes. And you plan to do what? Witness the men who came before you with their weapons and their magic. Look what happened to them. Turn to stone. Each and every one of them for all eternity. I even own their souls now. And they will feed me and keep me strong for as long as I need them. How original. Been reading a lot of fairy tales lately, have we? Oh, how precious. <laughs> See? I could scour your flesh off your bones in a second, little girl. Now, do you think you could defeat me? Yeah, now, the way you actually solve this is kind of out of left field. Um, I honestly do not remember ever seeing anything that would explain why I have to solve this this way, but... How about a proper challenge? A proper... <clears throat> what, what do you mean by a proper challenge? I can't defeat you with magic. I'm not a wizard. Wizards? Frauds! The lot of them! The only real magic is the magic of alchemy. But of course, you cannot defeat me with magic. That is why I will win. What's so great about beating me with magic? That's not a challenge. That's a walkover. If we even the odds out a bit, you'll have more fun and satisfaction from turning me into stone later. You are trying to trick me. I know that. But you intrigue me, little girl. Go on, then. Issue a challenge worthy of my powers. All right. Notice that we're suddenly not in conversation mode, which means we can do something now. What we have to do, and like I said, I don't know why this is something that's supposed to work. We attack him with the calculator. I challenge you to a contest of simple arithmetic using only this petty little device against your supreme intellectual powers. Give me your best shot, but after this, I will take your soul and trap you in stone for all eternity. Sounds good to me. Okay, here's one. 49 times 11. 
49 times 11 what? Numbers. Okay, think of apples and oranges. 49 apples times 11 oranges. 49 times 11. Let's see. Carry the one over, divide by three. What to do with that file? <clears throat> no, forget that one. So that leaves us with... Nine! Aha! <laughs> Wrong. It's 539. That was an easy one, Clax. Is that the best you can do? Uh, two out of three. I'll give you an even easier one this time. 603 divided by three. Ooh, you underestimate my powers, little girl. 5,867.2.3. Aha! Way off, buddy. It's 201. Sorry, you lose. Give me that thing. Ooh, this is intriguing. This really is. What does this do? Oh, my. Oh, that was probably a bad thing in the long run, but... Okay. I really want to know why that did that. That was... And I always thought math was such a waste of time. I'm not really sure why that worked or did what it did. I mean, there seems to be no really good reason why that should have happened. But, oh well. Let's go on up to Roverclack's tower, now that he's trapped in a calculator. All right. We have all kinds of things in here. There's the crystal over here, which is where all these souls are hidden. It's a crystal ball with tiny specks of light flitting back and forth inside. This must be where Clax has trapped the souls of all those unfortunate people. Now, we're going to have to learn alchemy here. So we're going to have to start doing a bunch of different things. There's a big book over here. Now you notice that part of the book is torn out. This page has been torn out, leaving only part of it readable. If you bother to tear it out, it must be important. Now if you think back a few scenes, we actually saw a piece of parchment lying in front of a mirror. The one that had the mirror April in it. Well, we can only learn one spell here, so let's see what it does. It's a spell. Clouds and spider's webs, plus, um, magic finger? If alchemy is anything like chemistry, that last one is probably some kind of catalyst or something. Clouds and spider web plus catalyst makes invisible? Yeah. Now, we can't do anything else, and weirdly, we can't even look at this other page. Only part of this page is readable. So, who knows. All right. Well, let's go see what we can find around here. We can find a vial down here of some sort of container. And what we have now is a white essence. Now there's a bunch of these essence vials around. We're just going to have to get several of them. Let's see if they need to go over there. Let's go over here. There's something behind the curtain. Clever fellow, that Roper Clax. Who'd think to look there? Well, you just did April, so I don't know why that's so clever. We have another vial here. And there's a couple of other vials scattered around. There's one up here that we can't get to yet. And let's go over here. There's a skull. 
I really like having skulls around. Notice that skull is glowing blue. Because there's a blue vial behind it. So let's take that one. Alright, we now have three vials. Okay? Blue, green, or white, green, and blue. And we can find out things about these files. I, oops, I didn't mean to take it away. <sighs> Did it again. It smells like ozone. It feels moist and light. Fluffy almost. Sounds like distant thunder. Okay, so that's remember how that thing had clouds as the first recipe, first ingredient in that recipe. What if that's clouds? What do you think? It smells like pearls of morning dew. It has the texture of thin strands of hair. I can hear the rustling of tiny legs. All right. Remember the second one had um. The second one was spider webs. Hmm, kind of sounds like a spider web, doesn't it? It smells hard to define. Sharp, decisive, earthy. It feels cool to the touch, like ice. I can hear a distant tingling sound like crystal bells. All right, that's all we really have for right now. But this is the catalyst. Now we use these here in the cauldron. And there's also a yellow flask here. I should probably have picked that up and looked at it first. Just so you know what that is. It smells like fresh flowers. It feels soft like satin and very fragile. It sounds like the rapid flapping of fragile wings. Okay, we haven't learned what that might be yet, but I just wanted to mention it was there. Now, um, since we just picked it up, we're going to start with the white essence, because if you remember that thing we found said that it was clouds plus um, spider web plus catalyst. So we're going to start with the clouds. Put it in here. Then we're going to take the spider webs. And finally, the catalyst. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Like so. Fortunately, they're small enough to carry in my pocket. Alright. So we now have a invisibility potion. Let's see, our menu's dinner has gotten big enough we have to go to a different page. We have an invisibility potion now. So, let's go back downstairs for a moment. We just leave the calculator sitting up there. And you see, even though we went through that door, we come out this door. Yeah, I don't get it either, but okay. I guess they didn't want to make us do that little trick over and over again. Now, I need to get this from in front of this mirror without being attacked by my mirror self. Well, if my mirror self can't see me... I'm invisible! That's so cool!
and now we've solid again. Good timing. I've got to hold on to this stuff. If nothing else, it's perfect for sneaking into clubs back home. Glad to see you have your priorities straight, April. All right. Let's head back up to the. Let's head back up to the tower. And see what kind of more trouble we can get into. Now we have this piece of parchment here. It's a page that's been torn out of a book. But From we... the intricate schizophrenic handwriting and the frighteningly detailed illustrations, I'd say it came from a spell book. I could be wrong, but no. Yeah, well, we know where it's from. Anyway, we can't look at it in our inventory for some reason. We have to put it back together. And I'm doing this in the wrong order. So I have to look at the book, then put it back together. There we go. So now we have a series of potions we can build. Butterfly wings with clouds makes leaf? Makes you light as a leaf, probably. Okay, so that's the first one. That's the leaf potion. Then we have this one. Clouds with brimstone makes storm. Storm? I could bring the wind back with this potion. There's the wind potion. Brimstone with brimstone makes Big Bang. Ooh, like a firecracker. I always wanted a firecracker. Just a firecracker, April? That's all you've ever wanted. Spider's webs and butterfly wings makes... What is that? A chain around a chaotic symbol? Chaotic like... like magic? Chain magic? Bind magic! Yes, and I'm sure that will possibly become useful. So, we need to find these other things now. Now, the only thing we're missing is we don't have brimstone. Well, remember, there's a red potion up here that we can't get to. But we have something called a leaf potion we can make with what we do have. So. Now, the leaf potion, if you remember, was a butterfly wing, which is this one. Remember, we heard the flapping of little wings when we sniffed it, or listened to it. Plus our cloud potion. And everything always ends with the catalyst. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. All right. And as you can see, we now have a light as a leaf potion. All right. We're going to walk over here first. Because if you remember from the fun we had with the invisibility potion, these things don't last forever. So I'm going to start by getting this. So we take the leaf potion and use it on April. I'll just take a tiny little sip. <laughs> Bitter. I do feel a little less weighty. If I put my mind to it, I could probably jump quite high. Whoa! I should save some of this stuff for the Olympic Games next year. It's a safe bet. I dominate the high jump and pole vault contests. I'm sure you would, Abel. Um, let's get back to the cauldron and do the finish making our potions. And I think you've got the idea of how this works right now, so I'll probably just fade out for a second here and come back in when we have all of our potions. All right, and we're back here again. Um, if you notice, I now have put together the various potions. This 
is the invisibility, which we already had. The light is the lead, which we already had. The wind potion is the white essence and the red essence, which is brimstone plus blue, of course. The big bang potion is you use the red essence twice and then the blue essence. And the bind magic, we use the green essence and the yellow essence and then the blue essence. So now we've got everything here. Let's worry about freeing everyone. Now, it's a little odd here. Um, what you have to do is you have to use the bind magic first. I'm not really sure why. I guess we're making sure everything is stuck there. I don't know. And then we use the Big Bang Potion. And I guess that did something. The gargoyles really were gargoyles. And I think that's a clear don't look down situation. All right. Now we need to get out of here. And remember, we're floating miles in the air at this point. Not much to see out here. I don't know how high up we are, but there are clouds below us and I can't see the ground. Well, fortunately, we know someone who flies, don't we, April? <laughs> she does that little <laughs> dance maneuver every time she blows that flute. What's going on? Nice digs you found here, though I'd cut down on the mad alchemist decor just a little. It's just not you. I don't plan on sticking around, Crow. Heck, why not? You'll be mobile. Home security is not an issue, and you can strike fear into the hearts of men. When you put it like that, no. Hey, up to you. So, why'd you call me? What's going on out there? What's going on is that we're currently cruising at an altitude of, uh, oh, very high. And where are we heading? We're very slowly going nowhere except up. There's no wind, remember? It'll start getting chilly and hard to breathe in a few hours, however. That won't be very pleasant. I could use some help. I'll try my best. Just let me know what you want me to do. Well, we have a wind potion. Think you can help us with that? under this vial, okay? Oh, sure. Holding on to stuff is a specialty of mine. What for? I'll let you know. And now, we just need to... Well, there we go. Send Crow on a mission. I want you to fly out there, Crow, as high as you can and empty the potion into the clouds. But what if there's lightning? I don't like lightning. Lightning has caused better birds than me to crash and burn. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'm the ever faithful crow. And we appreciate it, crow. Well, that sounds like the wind. I guess that's working. Uh-oh, I guess it's working. Yeah, we just figured that out, April. That's done with. There's still quite a bit left in the bottle in case you need it later on. Yeah, because you never know when you're going to need a bottle of wind, as opposed to a bag of wind. Ha ha ha. Okay, I'll stop. Oh, for, how about that? It conveniently blows it back into the t road just north of Mercuria. And if I were this guy, I think I'd be getting ready to drop, tuck, and roll. What do you think? <laughs> Drop, tuck, and roll. Now, 
question I have is, what happened to all the other people that were in the castle? Remember, there were all these people that were turned to stone that presumably all got freed? I guess they're out wandering around north of Mercuria, too. Oh, well, anyway, that's pretty much it for this. Um, we're going to have to go back into Mercuria now and see if we can convince Nebeve to take us to Elias, since, after all, the wind is back. But this is as good a stopping point as any. So, until next time, this is Dennis, this is Tanstavl the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time as we continue The Longest Journey. I will see you then.